Okay, welcome everyone to this virtual meetup brought to you by India Sourcing Trip and the Asian Seller. So excited to have you guys here today. So um, let me just quickly give a quick introduction to um, you know people who don't know who I am. My name is Meghla Bhardwaj. I am based in Singapore. I've actually been working in the sourcing industry for um, over 19 years. I worked in the worked in India, Philippines, China. I lived in Shenzhen for almost nine years and I'm currently based in Singapore. I organize events for e-commerce sellers and I've also produced um, a lot of research reports on China manufacturing and China uh, production. And I've visited hundreds of factories in China and India. And um, I have a good understanding of how import and uh, manufacturing works. I'm also the founder of the Asian Seller and India Sourcing Trip. What exactly are these two things? So uh, the Asian Seller is a community that I've, uh, I'm building up here in Asia to help e-commerce and Amazon sellers start and grow their private label business. We host uh, meetups and uh, we're also planning to do workshops. We're planning to do a sourcing trip. We also offer a lot of resources and um, special offers on various services. We also have a podcast check out the asianseller.com for more information. And um, I also organize India Sourcing Trip. So this is an eight day tour that is um, for e-commerce and Amazon sellers who want to source private label products from India. So this is a learning, sourcing and cultural guided tour uh, to Delhi in India. The next one is coming up in October. And uh, some of the experts that I have on here today, Margaret and Kevin and Chris Thomas, they are actually coaches on India Sourcing Trip as well. They went with us to India last year. Oops. So get more information uh, about the trip on indiasourcingtrip.com. Okay, so what's our agenda for today? Um, first of all, can I ask everyone to make sure that they are muted? I think most of you are muted, but I still hear some ruffling papers. So just make sure that you're muted at all times. That's super important. Um, okay, so what's on the agenda for today? First of all, we're going to have a panel discussion. We've got a couple of e-commerce experts. I'm going to introduce them uh, in a bit. And there are two key issues that we want to address. So first of all, of course, this whole uh, coronavirus has been disrupting supply chains and there's a lot of there's a lot going on. So we want to try to address some of the um, things that are happening currently with, with COVID-19 and how they're impacting e-commerce sales. And we also want to um, hopefully provide you solutions on how to address those issues. We don't want to be negative and say, oh, you know, sales are going down and the world is coming to an end and it's all doom and gloom. What we want to do is we want to find opportunities in what's going on. Um, and trust me, there are a lot of opportunities. We just have to look um, in the right direction. Of course, we have to be cautious because there are certain things that we need to be aware of and we need to be prepared for the worst, but we also need to uh, try and look for the positive side of things and, and look for opportunities. So I would encourage all of you, you know, during the webinar, feel free to um, participate in the conversation by typing in your comments and share anything that comes to mind, share, share any ideas with everybody um, about you know, the opportunities that all of this entire situation is bringing to everyone. And then recently, there have been some restrictions on FBA, um, um, you know, deliveries. So Amazon has announced that they are going to uh, prioritize uh, deliveries of essential items, and they are not accepting any new shipments of non-essential items. So we're going to be discussing that as well and what that means for Amazon sellers and um, how you can um, address that issue. And then we're going to open the uh, the floor for Q and A. So we have um, you know um, all of the sourcing ex uh, the e-commerce experts over here. You can ask them any questions. Um, and after we finish, then you can you're welcome to stay on and hang out and just uh, you know chat with uh, each other. Okay, some housekeeping over here. So um, you can of course turn on your video or you can do uh, only an audio call. It's totally up to you. This is very important. Make sure that your mic is muted at all times. If you do have a question, then there is a button over here, uh, raise hand. You should see that somewhere on a toolbar, probably at the bottom of your screen. So press that button when you, uh, or tap it if you're on your phone. And um, I'll be able to see that you've raised your hand to ask a question. And then wait for me to uh, 
to say your name, unmute your mic, and then ask your question or you know speak and, and say whatever you need to say. Uh, or you could also type in your questions over here in the chat box. There's a, there's a field at the bottom of your screen that you should see where you can type in your questions and I will read them out to um, the e-commerce experts that we have. Also, um, a recording will be sent out to everyone by email. So in case you need to leave or um, you, you missed a portion of the webinar, it will be available. Michelle, I saw that you raised your hand. Did you have something to say? Or were you uh, just testing it? No, no, I just um, located it. If you open the participants, um, so on the bottom toolbar, if you go into participants, the raised hand is at the bottom of that box that opens up. Okay, okay, awesome. Thanks, thanks a lot. Okay, so here are the experts that we have on the panel today. Um, and I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves a little bit. So first of all, we have Jason Tay, who's from Singapore. So Jason, can you um, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and how you help Amazon sellers? Sure. So hi, uh, I'm originally from Singapore, currently residing in Perth. Um, I shuttle back and forth, not so much shuttling at the moment. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've been selling on Amazon since end of 2013. Um, right now, uh, I've been bugged by people to provide training and help them for many years. So I started doing that a couple of years ago. Um, so yeah, I, I run a course and then I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with the people after that. And, uh, I try to make myself available too. So here in Perth, we've done a couple of meetups. I see some of the folks here, uh, and, uh, yeah, feel free to shoot me any questions. I respond very quickly on Facebook Messenger, as some of you here can attest. Uh, so you can find me on Messenger on Facebook, or the best way to look me up is go to my website at Jason Tay, that's T A Y online dot com. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. I'm just going to quickly read out some comments here. So Margaret is saying, most importantly, mother of Adi. Yes, that's super important. <laughs> um, uh, Ilya, we cannot turn off the, the, the bell when people join in. Um, there's probably a way to do that, but uh, yeah, I don't want to look at it right now. Um, okay, cool. Chris, how about you? Sorry, I just had to unmute. Yeah, so I'm Chris Thomas. I run a podcast called the Australian Seller Podcast, although I've been a little quiet the last couple of weeks. Sorry about that. Uh, do some private coaching. Been selling on Amazon since uh, 2014, the end of 2014. Uh, and I consult to quite a few companies about uh, you know, selling on Amazon and helping with their accounts. Um, yeah, that's me. And of course, your website is theaustralianseller.com, right? That's you correct. Yes, yes. It. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a Facebook group and a whole meetups like Jason and yeah, in, here in Melbourne anyway. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Cool. Margaret, how about you? Margaret and Kevin. Well, Kevin's on, he's Valano, he's down on the screen. Yeah, look, I've been selling or we've been selling on Amazon for um, oh, about three and a half years now. Uh, we started off sourcing from China and South Korea and about two and a half years ago, we moved to solely focus from India. Um, hence, we became coaches on the Indian sourcing trip. Um, we sort of facilitate a, what started off as a very small little meetup Facebook group in Geelong and it's now um, developed with about 100 people that we just um, meet up locally every six or so weeks just to share and be there if people need some advice or some help. Um, and I also just offer some one-on-one -on -one coaching to people, mainly new starters who are trying to work their way through this Amazon maze and get stuck. Um, and I quite freely share my experiences, both good and bad, because, um, I mean, most people I think would have lost or done something wrong in their early days and it's good to be able to help people with those things and avoid them doing it so um i try and say to them, don't do that because i did it and it didn't work so uh, that's where um I, I try and help people that way <laughs> yeah and of course margaret i mean your coaching the one-on-one -on -one coaching that you provide i think that's very useful for people especially as you and kevin have run multiple businesses over the course of your career so you have so much experience you know, managing a business. So that's uh, something that you teach people how to um, look at this Amazon, you know, selling as a business, not just as a side hustle. So cool. Yeah. And I think and, uh, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. I, I, I tend to hone on people and harp them to make sure they've got their costings right. Because if you haven't got your costings right in any business, whether it's Amazon 
or any bricks and mortar for yourself. So um, that's yeah, something I really focus heavy on. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, if people want to reach you, they can maybe uh, look you up on Facebook, right? Is that the best way? Yeah, or they can just PM me through Messenger or Messenger. Um, Facebook, whichever, whatever's easier. Um, I've got a few different, uh, we can put those, they're in the yeah. group, I think, anyway, our contacts, aren't they? Yeah, we'll, we'll put them up later. Okay, so let's get started. Bring your own coffee or tea or wine or juice or whatever you want. <laughs> Make sure you're ready. Chris, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Um, okay, wow, we've got a lot of people here. Um, so, Tricia, good day all. I'm just reading the comments here. Okay, nothing. Um, all right, awesome. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask um, our, our panel a couple of questions first. And, um, you know, then we're going to go into Q&A. So, um, first of all, I want to ask you guys, you know, what sort of impact are you seeing on your own sales because of COVID-19? And um, what do you think is happening with the supply chains right now? What are you hearing from your suppliers in China? And uh, what are you experiences? What, what are you experiencing now? So, uh, Chris, why don't you go first? Um, sure. Thanks, Megla. So, my sales have basically tanked. So I'm in a very discretionary uh, set of niches. So um, things aren't great. I've got clients though that are doing some clients who sell in um, other niches are just going absolutely crazy and, and really panicking to try and figure out how to actually stay, stay ahead of the curve. Um, so there's a real luck of the lottery in terms of which category you happen to be in as to whether what the impact would look like or looks like for you right now. Um, in terms of suppliers, the, uh, China is back up and running like they're probably around 75 or 80 percent capacity and they're sort of wondering where everybody went like <laughs> so <laughs> so where is everybody why isn't anybody ordering from us um, and I guess you know that we can talk about logistics later but um, yeah, at the moment certainly China's fine India still seems fine um, I don't source out of it any other country so I couldn't really comment on those so um, yeah but that's what I'm saying at the moment yeah right what about you Margaret uh, yeah, well, look, our sales are probably down. Or they're up and down. Some days they're quite good, and then the next day you'll virtually sell nothing, and then it'll jump back up again. I, and I've been sort of in contact with a lot of people, um, and most people, unless you're in a really demand niche or a niche that people are at home and wanting office supplies or you know games and things to keep the kids amused, that's educational things. I think they're doing very well. But anyone who's just doing like gifts and basic home you know picture frames or whatever people aren't buying that that type of goods so i think that's going to have a pretty big impact and it's hard to know whether it's going to get worse or it's just going to keep going up and down depending on what happens with the economy i think in the us because if a lot of people aren't having an income it could you know tank even further uh supply chain um well we actually had a meeting um with our supplier yesterday and asked him and in India, they're out of Delhi, just a bit more of it, out about four hours away. Um, he said it's not affecting them whatsoever. Their staff are all working. Um, they don't actually have any cases in the, you know, the area itself. Um, but obviously, there's some cases in Delhi and Mumbai. So if, depending where your um, supply chain is, it might be slightly different um, to be affected. But look, China, um, I actually manage some accounts for another company. And... Um, I get emails two or three times a day. You want to buy some more? Why aren't you buying? You haven't ordered any more stock. It's driving me crazy because I think they're desperate to get sales. They just want to use your buy, buy, buy. So I think anyone who's looking to source out of China won't have an issue at the moment because they seem to be, raw, you know, just rearing, ready to go, um, which we'll talk about later why you might not want to do all that either. Right. What about you, Jason? What are you seeing and experiencing? Well, my sales are doing pretty okay. Uh, it's cost half my products, I think, are in the skincare kind of niche. Mm. So personal care, soap, that kind of thing. Uh, and um, the stuff from... I have stuff that comes... So that's all made in the US. So I don't have much of a problem with that. I work with mostly small businesses to produce that. Uh, the other half of my stuff that's made in China... Uh, some of it's run out of stock and um, but the factories are back up and my shipment is scheduled to leave China on the 5th of April 
So uh, then that will get to Amazon, pro- hopefully uh, beginning of May. Uh, part of the shipment now can't be sent to FBA. Uh, I just checked my shipment thing this morning and a couple of the listings are not allowed to be shipped into Amazon at the moment because of the new like prioritization situation with FBA. So we'll see how that goes, but it really depends on what you're selling. Yesterday, I received a message from one of the guys I'm coaching and he said uh, his sales are completely like down and it's because he's in a more party kind of uh, product. So if you're doing something like party related, wedding related, um, you're going to be hit pretty hard at the moment with the COVID situation. But if you're doing something that people need day to day, I think that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like China is, um, you know, up and running to quite an extent. I would say, you know, about 60 to 70% of the, the factories are up and running. Of course, they're not, um, you know, fully staffed yet. I think that's still one issue, but increasingly it's, it's getting better. And uh, what are you guys seeing in terms of logistics? So, you know, we were hearing earlier this week that air freight prices are pretty high from China because there is less capacity, because a lot of the airlines have actually canceled their, uh, their flights out of China and into China. So, um, and in India, we, we just uh, found out yesterday uh, from one of the freight forwarders in our Facebook group that they're starting to see some disruptions in India. Um, Sri Lanka, for example, has um, stopped shipments for a couple of days. And uh, in India too, it's become slower. They're not accepting any new um, registrations for the import export code. And um, yeah, overall, even though things are still moving on, but they're kind of uh, getting a bit slow. So what are you guys seeing in terms of logistics? Chris, do you want to go first? Yeah, so um, you're absolutely right. Um, because there are no airlines that are flying into China, it means that there's no airlines flying out. And that was what basically kept the prices of air freight shipping out of China at a, you know, quite low cost. Um, so um, just directly, I, I have e-commerce as well. So I fulfill my products from a company called Flowship in, uh, in Hong Kong and Shenzhen. And they just sent me an email this morning, actually, or actually last night saying that the air freight costs for, you know, fulfillment um, out of, out of Hong Kong and Shenzhen uh, uh, dramatically increased. So, um, I expect that situation isn't going to change for any any time soon. I think that um, a lot of airlines, as we're reading about every day, uh, are just cutting down routes or just halting all international flights altogether. So I actually sort of starting to think that um, really the logistics companies that are dedicated, so uh, who are we talking about, DHL, um, you know, FedEx, those guys that actually have their own kind of fleet, and maybe to some extent Amazon, um, you know, we'll probably do the bulk of that, but the prices are going to go through the roof. So really, I kind of see the only thing that hasn't really changed much from what I'm hearing, uh, and I haven't asked for any quotes from anybody, but um, is sea freight. Even though it's going to take longer, I think that's probably the the option that is going to end up being the most effective for most uh, Amazon sellers if they wish to get their products out of China and into the US or, or even into Europe. Yeah. So Margaret uh, Enever has a few comments here. She's saying, I'm in discretionary spend niche, but my sales have been okay until today when sales tanked. And she's also Mm -hmm. saying, I got an email from my freight company. Shipping companies are desperately trying to get ships and containers, et cetera, in place, ready to start when supply production ramps back up. Yeah, so uh, Margaret uh, Jolly, what about you? What are you seeing in terms of logistics? Uh, Well, actually speaking to um, a couple of people yesterday afternoon and they've been getting quotes and find their shipping quotes haven't changed. Uh, But I think possibly at the moment if if I had some goods ready um, to be shipped, I'd be trying to ship them now and put them into the US while I can because I think if you leave it till the month's up when you can actually get it into Amazon, you might end up paying like double the shipping rates because of the... Um, demand it's just going to be a supply and demand so everyone's going to be sort of holding back so I think if you've got something that's ready 
um, personally, I would be putting it into a 3PL. At least it's in America. It's around the corner from Amazon. And, you know, once things pick up and pray tell, hopefully it's sooner than later, that you can, you know, you can be there in a couple of days. You're not going to be in the back of this great big queue because if everything's on the sea, it's going to take those people, you know, four or five weeks to get live. So if you can be there and, you know, into the um, warehouses in two or three days from your 3PL, I think you're going to have a little bit of a leeway there to, to get up and, you know, maybe get claw back some of your market, especially if you've run out, that you can um, get yourself back up. But, you know, it's hard to tell because every day, as we know, something else changes in the whole world of, you know, Amazon, America, um, you know. Yeah. So it's just, I think you've just got to look at it daily as well. You can't really go, this is a one size fits all um, and it's going to work like that. It, you've really got to look at what, you, you know, what you're shipping in as well and, you know, how big it is, how much it's going to cost you if you're going from air freight to sea freight or, you know, whatever. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, a lot of cities in the US, of course, are shutting down in Europe, too. So that might result in disruptions at ports over there. That's something else that you need to keep in mind. Even if you can get your products out of China or India, will they be able to, you know, be received in, in, the, in the ports? You have to keep that in mind. Jason, what are you seeing in terms of logistics? Well, I agree with what you just said and what Margaret was saying, that um, if you can get your stuff out, ASAP, I think that's a good thing to do because uh, you never know, uh, US ports could go on lockdown and then your cargo would just be stuck. Uh, I've experienced that before uh, where there was a three week like delay in LA some years ago, like I think all the port workers went on strike or something. Um, so uh, with regards to, I don't do any air freight anymore uh, because I find uh, for me um, shipping out of if I'm shipping out of China, I use what the local people refer to as fast boat that typically takes, takes about three weeks, uh, three to four weeks, so 25 days plus minus. Uh, so that's not a lot slower than air freight, but the price is like way less than air freight. I'm talking about like a dollar, just a dollar some per kilo, per kilo kind of situation. Um, so uh, maybe one Thing that's interesting that people might not be aware of if you're if you uh, when you talk about air freight uh, it's what happens is the freight companies are actually booking cargo capacity on passenger planes right. uh, so that's your Qantas your Singapore Airlines your Emirates uh, but because um, like Qantas has cancelled all international flights effective like today I think um, so because of that situation then uh, there is very little air freight capacity and therefore demand way exceeds supply and so skyrocketing uh, air freight prices. Um, so yeah, that's the situation. Mm, so just be aware of that and I think just learn to roll with the punches and adapt as things go because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's changing day to day. So. Yeah. Exactly. Keep in close contact with your freight forwarder and make sure that uh, you know they are also um, aware of what's going on. I mean, if you have shipments that are ready in India right now, we would suggest not to ship them, uh, maybe to store them in either. A, I mean, if you can get them out of India and if you can get them accepted in a port in, in the US, then get them to a 3PL. But if not, um, then get your supplier to store them for a couple of weeks um, you know, until the situation clears out a little bit. Okay, so you guys talked about, you know, the products that are selling well uh, a little bit earlier. So let's dig a little bit deeper into the types of opportunities that, uh, you know, this situation is, um, is, is bringing to e-commerce sellers. So what are some of the products and categories that people can sell in, you know, such an environment? Of course, it may be a bit late for people to um, to do private label of these products, but you know, if they can do maybe arbitrage, that's something that people can consider. Or um, the other thing that I want to discuss is how does all of this change product research? You know, if people are doing product research right now using tools like Helium 10, of course, all of the data is skewed, right? So that's something that people need to keep in mind. So can you address you know product research a little bit, Chris? Why didn't you go first? Yeah, this is a really, really tricky topic right now because I think everybody in every single um, Amazon forum is talking about we've got to start switching um, our product research to more essential items. And I was guilty of that yesterday as I started sort of thinking about, you know, um, how things are going to change. But if we all do that and we all start selling 
you know, home office products and kids' toys and and all the grocery and and beauty products and stuff like that. It's it, it, those um, those categories could get quite saturated. So I think if you're going to do it, you really want to do some some really you know some solid innovation around your idea or your product idea. Um, I'm just worried that this sort of herd, herd mentality can really take over here, and you could really find yourself a little bit stranded. I. I look at um, some some bigger data around this and, you know, just sort of the recovery times from when, say, the share market crashes and the average recovery um, from the bottom back to where a market was after a fall is usually about 500 days, five to 600 days, so about, a, um, about two years. Um, this, I think, is actually going to be a lot more severe than any other kind of economic crisis that we've had. And I think it, it could take a lot longer to recover, but I still think that we need to take uh, a long-term view, but it's a really, really tough question. This one, I don't, I don't have a, an answer right now as to exactly um, what to do other than to say, I think a lot, a lot fewer people are going to have jobs. In fact, yeah. there's a lot of few, a lot fewer people have jobs right now. And if they don't have jobs, <clears throat> they ain't got money. And if they ain't got money and they're not getting that much support from the government, then, um, yeah, you know, this could have a, I mean, I don't want to be negative, but you know, really just trying to think realistically about the, the situation and where it's going to go. Um, discretionary spending, I think for quite the foreseeable future is going to be down quite significantly. Right. Margaret, what about you? Any thoughts? Yeah, well, I think I suppose people have got to be careful. And I mean, it's almost coming up to the time, you know, May, June, where you start looking at your Christmas orders. And I think, you know, if you sold, I mean, obviously, hopefully by Christmas, Christmas gifts are still going to be around. But, you know, if you sold 5,000 of something last Christmas, I don't think I'd be going willy nilly and ordering 5,000 this Christmas. I think I'd be a little bit nervous. Um, and like every niche is going to be different once again, if it's something that's really flying off the shelf, but just general um, Christmas gift type things that you might, you know, buy for your mama you know, vase or whatever, I don't think those sorts of things are going to be as busy because there's just not going to be the money around to do those things. So I think we need to be careful with thinking ahead that far, but we don't, we haven't got the luxury of waiting until September to decide what we're going to do at Christmas. So um, I think that's something people are going to be, it's almost like, you know, throwing a coin up in the air and seeing where it lands because it's just an unknown sort of amount at the moment. And I think, to do product research and make a decision that you're going to do something, I don't know, pens or pencils or something like that, the figures are going to be so skewed at the moment mm. that you could end up going into um, something that's um, like the toilet paper. They sold 18 months supply in two weeks, so we might end up doing the same with pens. So I mm. think it's very dangerous um, to just jump ship. I know look, there's a lot of big season sellers out there that have people on the ground that can jump in quickly and do something like that. And they've got a lot more experience than most of, you know, the people on this system. So I think it's not, it's okay if you really know what you're doing, you've got the resources to jump in and be able to move really quickly. But for a lot of people on here, they sometimes haven't even started. So I don't think it's a good idea to think, oh, I'm going to make a killing and jump onto some product that, you know, hand sanitizer is really busy. I'll jump into that. I think you could lose a lot of money because um, you're not experienced enough even to, you know, tackle with the big boys. And that's where all the big boys will be playing at the moment in, in those really um, big niches that have got deep pockets for, you know, advertising and things like that. So I think it's a little bit dangerous. I think people that are just starting out need to just sit and think, okay, it's just going to take me a little bit longer to get to this journey. Uh, it's not a rush and and take it easy, not just grab things willy-nilly because what they've got's not selling and try and move niches because it might not be the right niche because I think there's so many distorted figures out there now that it, it's almost like doing your product research Christmas week and deciding what you're going to sell because it's the same scenario. Um, it's just too distorted. So that's probably my biggest take is be very careful if you're going to look. But maybe we need to all look at having, but you know, pray tell, I hope this doesn't happen again very, you know, frequently, but be a little bit more diversified so we're not all in the same sort of niche that you maybe have two brands and one is a little bit more a commodity mm -hmm. um, and one is something else. But, you know, I think you'd still take a long term and take yourself, you know, 12 months to decide which other thing when it all settles because it might sell very well the rest of the time. I mean, 
you know, without being pre-looking at the data, you're not going to know that. So, but I think maybe long term, you maybe start looking at something different as well as what you're selling if you're in a, a niche that's just, you know, taking the biggest nosedive out. Um, but just please don't rush off and grab something because I think you will be sorry because it's just too, too up and down at the moment to make any decision. Megla, can I jump in for one second? Yeah, absolutely. Just, just really quick. Sorry to interrupt the the show. <laughs> I just want to urge people that are watching this not to exploit this situation. So, people are definitely trying to exploit the fear that's surrounding this hot, you know, the outbreak, and just the amount of people asking me and the offers that I'm receiving too around. You know, we've I can get a whole bunch of face masks. I can get a whole bunch of coronavirus testing kits. I can get a whole bunch of hand sanitizer and. Yeah that is just going to be an absolute S storm. Um, you, you know, and I'd argue that you probably wouldn't be able to sell them on Amazon anyway. So um, yeah, just, just don't, don't exploit that. That's not marketing. That's not entrepreneurship. This is, um, you know, we need to take a long-term view and carefully plan out how we're going to do our product research into the future. And I really like Margaret's point about diversification. I think that's a really solid point that it would be a really clever idea or a prudent idea potentially to have that sort of um, not only eggs sitting in one gifty basket or whatever your niche is actually perhaps try and create another brand outside. That's a little bit more day to day. Absolutely. Margaret Enever uh, has posted a comment here. The sun will come out tomorrow. Governments will race to get dollars back into their economies. Employers will need to rehire. People may be a little wary and need to catch up on financial stuff, but things will go on. Markets, et cetera, will always rebound. Yeah, definitely. They will always rebound. And, um, you know, we've got to be ready for that. Um, so, Jason, do you want to add something on product research and product selection? Sure. I think uh, with social distancing and people staying at home, <laughs> uh, now's, a, now's a good time to do product research. But uh, if you're sitting at home, but just be aware of like the skewed numbers, as mentioned, uh, a lot of the tools would have things like um, being able to look at the historical sales data. Like when I use Heatem 10, for example, don't then right now, don't just look at the 30 day sales, make sure you pull up the graph and look at all time sales. Uh, mm -hmm. So you know what the trends are over the years and months, uh, as opposed to just like the last one or two months. Uh, so now's a good time to do keyword research. I think, um, what other, yeah, one other point, uh, I prefer to do a slow, steady approach when it comes to picking things to sell uh, rather than running after fads. Yes. So I think, uh, like mentioned, toilet paper. And uh, I drove down like three hours uh, over the weekend uh, down south of uh, Western Australia. And even in the little towns, toilet paper was wiped out. <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh, that was ridiculous. But um, uh, the don't run after fads. Uh, and my advice would be look for stuff that would be steady sellers. Um, if um, you're looking at product research at the moment, and also the I agree with the point about diversification. So look look at different niches or types of products. Um, so don't just put everything into like oh party products. Uh, or everything into like uh, beauty products and just be I think being well diversified will help you um, ride out volatile periods yep yeah I think that's great advice and there's you know a lot of uh, the products are very boring that people don't consider that I think we should consider now so uh, for example there are a lot of DIY products or home improvement products you know nowadays people are at home they're quarantined so maybe they're thinking okay let me you know uh, make some improvements around the house or fix the toilets or, you know, whatever. Yeah. So those are kind of uh, some categories that you can consider, of course, not only for the short term now, but also um, for the long term. Um, so let's also talk a little bit about, um, you know, the limitations that have been placed on FBA shipments uh, recently. So what's happening is, um, you know, first of all, Amazon is actually hiring a lot of uh, employees, right? I mean, they announced 100,000 employees. Is that all warehouse employees or is it across all different functions? Uh, I wasn't very clear on that. Um, but so they are definitely experiencing very, very high demand and very high, uh, a high number of orders that they're unable to, to manage. So they are increasing the number of employees. And at the same time, they are prioritizing 
um, you know, essential items. So, um, you know, two questions for you guys. First of all, what do you think is really going on over here? I mean, why is Amazon uh, expanding so, so fast? And also, what can sellers do now, uh, especially sellers who are selling non-essential items? What are the options available to sellers? Chris, why don't you go first? Sure. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, you've nailed it. It's demand. It's unprecedented. And it is demand for uh, essential items, household items. You can see that from the brand analytics, both in the UK and also in, Aust uh, in Australia, uh, in the United States, that the top 25 search terms are basically all to do with household supplies and coronavirus. So yeah. um, that's what's going on there. Um, I'm going to talk about FBM in a second. <clears throat> the thing that um, is concerning me about the restrictions is that it was imposed very, very quickly. Um, and the thing that I guess, just sort of looking down the track, the thing that really concerns me is if Amazon actually stops fulfilling all items that are non-essential. So we could all be stranded anyway. Um, so I think we need to very, very quickly be looking to pivot to get into FBM. Um, and fulfillment by merchant is what I'm talking about there where you fulfill yourself. So to do that, um, you know, I always recommend to like copy a listing. So duplicate it and then have two listings that are exactly the same. One's FBM, one's FBA. I don't like to switch my listing directly because there is an option against each inventory item to convert directly to fulfill by merchant. Um, that can leave your FBA inventory kind of st stranded. Uh, so just be a little bit careful about how you how you manage that. I think I just posted something in my Facebook group, like a little screenshot of how I do that and some instructions. Um, the other thing, of course, is if you are going to go FBM, then you really need to make sure that you've got your delivery timings and expectations are all set properly, properly because a lot of us are going to cop some A to Z claims, uh, which is what happens when you're merchant fulfilling. Uh, if you don't set shipping and delivery times uh, for the expectations around that, you'll also probably see an increased demand of, and certainly with one of my clients, um, they do a lot of FBM. They actually do a lot of seller fulfilled prime in the United States. They get um, scores and scores of customer inquiries. Where's my parcel? Where's this? So you really need to gear up for, uh, you know, for a lot of added customer service inquiry levels too. So um, yeah, that's sort of uh, the, I guess the main sort of thing that is hot right now. So um, I think, to a point that was made earlier, when FBA does open up, um, there's going to be a massive backlog. So uh, the sooner that you can get yourself geared up towards, you know, fulfilling yourself, um, whether that's from Australia, whether it's doing it through a 3PL in the United States or even out of China or potentially India, I don't know, maybe we could talk about whether India has a 3PL -y sort of shimishka and all those guys. Um, but that, that's my two cents there on, on uh, what's happening. Okay. Cameron over here has posted a comment. I think that you can have two SKUs on one ASIN, one FBA, and one FBM. So in the same ASIN. Was that what you mentioned, Chris? Like the same ASIN? That's, that's okay. exactly right. So what, what I do is I've, I've uh, for my, a lot of my clients, I've actually been going through and um, converting the listings to FBM, not uh, that way, but um, yeah, by copying the listing or adding another condition is what I've been doing. Um, and, then, and I just give it a new SKU. So I just re uh, create a new SKU and just have append on the end of that that SKU um, FBM. So I know you know I know what it is anyway, but it, it doesn't hurt. Uh, but yeah, they share the exactly the same ASIN. So effectively, on your product page, um, you can have two offers, um, which you're both um, fulfilling. So Amazon's doing one, and you're doing the other. So when the Amazon inventory runs out, the FBA inventory is gone. Your listing's still up, and that means that. Um, you know, you're still getting sales and, and um, your, your listing doesn't suddenly just disappear, which is what happens when you run out of inventory. Right. So Cameron is saying it's not a new listing. It is a new SKU on the same listing. Correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, cool. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Margaret. Um, how about you? Uh, yeah, well, I think uh, you've got to be a little bit careful too. I mean, it's okay saying do FBM, but at the moment until... Um, America stabilizes a little bit because I was, I've been speaking. I've actually phoned my 3PL a few times with some questions, and um, he's saying to me that they've got a, call, a curfew of eight o'clock at night, which I knew nothing about, all down New York side. And um, he said, Look, he can do it for everyone while ever he can get staff to able to be able to go to work. But if they shut down New York or you know, New Jersey or you know, regions, 
wherever your 3PL is, it's going to be shut down, which could happen with Amazon Fulfillment Centres as well because if the virus goes rampant in a particular um, region or the warehouse or something even at Amazon, we could be in the same boat. So I think, um, you know, it's good to have that option, but we can't just rely totally on that because, um, you know, it's an unknown. Let, let's hope that in two weeks all this dies down, we, we smooth this curve out a little bit and we can all just keep going and utilise the 3PL. But uh, I don't think anyone can give you a guarantee, whether it be Amazon or any um, 3PL. And I know, I think probably a lot of people have heard of Amazing Logistics and we got an email from them this morning saying that they are now turning into doing um, the fulfilment from their warehouse as well. So um, if you've got stock in there, um, first in best dress, they're going to start doing it um, down the track. But I mean, how it's all going to work because it's, you know, once everyone wants that done, where's all the couriers? Like it's, you know, once again, are the couriers able to drive willy nilly all over America? How is all this, you know, being, you know, border control and everything in the next couple of weeks? It's just really got to, you know, be a day by day thing that you look at and decide on the day, I think, what you're going to uh, to take on and what you can't, because it could change overnight again. Right. So we have a question over here from Mohammed Sastro. He's asking, what about fulfilling fee on FBM? Is it cheaper or slightly the same with FBA? So I guess what he's asking is, if you use FBM, is you know the overall fulfillment cost, is it about the same as FBA? Margaret, what has been your experience? Look, it's slight, depending what parcel size you've got to and how you do the postage because depending on how your 3PL fulfills it, um, a bit like, I don't know, every country's probably the same, but I know here, like in Australia, our postage is quite expensive compared to what Amazon can do the postage for. So if your 3PL is just fulfilling it themselves for you, and I know Amazon can do that, but I don't know with all that's happening, whether they would be taking on doing um, any fulfillment for, you know, using their courier service or not. Have you heard that, Chris, at all? Are they still doing that? Um, I, I believe it's still possible to create merchant fulfilled orders. In fact, one of my clients did this morning, oh, sorry, a seller fulfilled order through uh, using their FBA inventory. So that's still open and, and, and possible at the moment. But again, it's, if you haven't created a shipping plan, you can't send items into Amazon unless it's essential. Uh, that's mm. number one. Number two, um, you, you know, the, the <laughs> more doom and gloom, but, um, you know, workers are getting sick in these, in the F FBA warehouses. And uh, there's even a report this morning from the Wall Street Journal that um, there's potential they could even go on strike because they're so worried. Um, so, you know, I think, yeah, things could, I don't know. It's just so fluid right now. It's really hard to know what to do. But I think what I'm trying to emphasize earlier was FBM really is the safest option right now. And as entrepreneurs, that's what we do. We have to pivot quickly and find a solution to stay in business. Right. So Margaret Enever has a comment here. She's saying, um, yes, I'm fulfilling by 3PL in Australia. And after conversion, they are the same cost as Amazon. And that is using Australia Post. Okay, Jason, what is your uh, take on what's happening with the FBA limitations and what options do people have? Sure, well, this morning before the call, I was just uh, looking at some FBM options uh, mm -hmm. in the US. Uh, might be worth checking out. I was looking at a company called uh, Flow.Space, I think is their um, website URL. Mm -hmm. uh, so they well, from what I read, they provide one or two day shipping. And since my account is eligible for seller fulfilled prime, uh, that might work. Um, I've been a hundred percent FBA so far. Um, but yeah, that's, um, something that I'm exploring now fulfillment by merchant. Um, yeah, I think the other thing like Chris, along the lines of what Chris mentioned, all it would take is one worker testing positive in a fulfillment center, like FBA fulfillment center, and the whole fulfillment center would have, like everyone would have to go on quarantine. And the fulfillment center would have to be shut down and, uh, I don't know, sanitized, fumigated, whatever. Uh, yeah, so that's, um, that's already started to happen in Europe, actually, in Spain and Italy. Yep. So they've had a couple of centers shut down for a little while while they try and cool. get all that fixed up. Yep. Yep. So ugly. yeah, not to be doom and gloom, but that's the reality of the days that we are living in. Um, on the bright side, 
what I think would happen in after this sort of blows over is that more people would be accustomed to shopping mm. online. Uh, so online sales is growing exponentially, I think, at this moment. Um, like before coming back to Perth uh, a month ago, I was two months in Singapore and I usually order my gro- some of my groceries on Red Mart, which uh, is a thing in Singapore. And I could not get anything. I could not order toilet paper. Uh, any order that I made in the normal, in normal circumstances, I would get the thing like by tomorrow. But when um, the coronavirus thing broke out, I think deliveries were like one or two weeks out. Uh, so a lot of people have shifted to online shopping. They're staying home and they're shopping online. And I think that it's going to be some, for some people that's going to become like a habit. Like, Oh, I might as well just do this from now on. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's what's happening right now with, with Amazon, right? I mean, people, of course, uh, uh, they're not able to go out and they're um, increasingly shopping online. Okay, so so what I'm hearing all of you say is that, um, you know, we've got to be very cautious. There are definitely some roadblocks in the next couple of weeks that we've got to be aware of. Sales might be down, you know, some Amazon warehouses might have issues. So, um, and of course, a lot of us are in quarantine or, you know, we're not um, going out much. A lot of events are canceled as well. And uh, now is, of course, not the right time to launch products. So what can we do? Let's let's try to talk a little bit about, you know, what should uh, we as Amazon sellers do right now? How can we make the most of the time that we have, um, you know, with us right now? For example, um, can we can we work on improving our business somehow? Can we work on you know, maybe looking at our listings that we already have on Amazon and uh, try to do a bit more maybe keyword research and try to improve our listings um, so that when Amazon is back up and when everything is, uh, you know, when the restrictions are lifted, then we're able to uh, to uh, kind of do better, you know, our conversion rates are better. So can you guys talk a little bit about that? You know, what are some of the things that Amazon sellers can do as of now, you know, this week, next week, next couple of weeks while all of this chaos is going on. So Margaret, go first. Uh, well, look, I think probably my, I'm a bit of a favorite of both Kevin King and Project X. And I think whether you're new or whether you've been selling for a while, it doesn't hurt to give a bit of a refresh. You might just pick up one or two points out of those, um, you know, sort of videos or YouTube, whatever they are. But And like one I'd like to point out, and I think it was really good I mean we actually do always ship because we're from India to the east coast and we found that a lot more economical but um, Tim does and I can't remember which actual podcast it was on um, somewhere about nine or ten I think where he talks about shipping and how he always ships to the east coast and how much you can save so if everyone watched that and took note of it um, you could save yourself a lot of money for the next you know infinite by just changing where you ship from. Even though he ships from China, he still believes it saves him a lot of money because of the port charges and all the excess charges going into um, the West Coast and like California type places. So I think, you know, there's always something we can all learn. And if you've got nothing else to do, why not take advantage of, you know, and I'm not saying to listen to 200 different things, but I think those two to me um, and the others can might have other suggestions, but I think they're the two best lots of information out there that are fairly current and not too over the top and there's no selling in them, which is what I like. I mean, you're getting information without just sign here and press this button and off you go again down to some marketer. Uh, so, I mean, and I think something I, I believe is very important is at the moment we're all sort of, a lot of people stuck at home, a lot of people, you know, getting stressed because they're not selling or, the, you know, the product stuck, don't know what to do, that you make yourself more available to other people just to be a, you know, an ear for somebody who's sitting at home struggling, send them a message um, or, you know, just maybe make contact with half a dozen of different sellers. We all know lots of sellers. And if you don't, there's plenty of us on here, pick someone and just ping them and say, you've got five minutes. Can you have a chat? And I think that way, just to support each other through this, um, because none of your friends outside Amazon will be able to help you because they haven't got a clue what we're talking about. <laughs> so I think it's um, you know important that we as a community try and, and help each other and become friends with more and more people. So you can just 
you know, hey, did you sell anything? Oh, no, but so-and-so did, so it's not too bad. And just it just might, you know, break their day up and give them something else. And I think the other thing is that we all make a plan to do things all day, like set yourself like you're going to work or like you're, you know, usually busy on Amazon and have a daily plan and do some exercise, do some work, have a bit of leisure. So it's, it's not just sitting there doom and gloom all day, you know, depressed about I haven't had a sale. I'm watching that thing, waiting for it to go ka and it doesn't go ka all day. So I think, you know, you just need to try and do something to keep yourself positive all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Jason, do you want to add to that? Yeah, um, more, mostly the same. And uh, just uh, keeping in contact with people, like getting on this call. Uh, <laughs> I spent the whole morning mostly like sending people messages and emails. Uh, <laughs> Um, even my agent in China, uh, he sent me a message last night and like, how's, how are you? How's the family? Uh, we, sh- we share stuff. I try to be really personal when uh, I work with people. Like he knows my mom uh, had cancer, that kind of thing. Uh, I know how his family is doing. Uh, so, well, he, he volunteered to, he just sent me a tracking number. He said, I'm sending you 100 face masks because I hear it's bad in Australia. <laughs> Um, so that kind of thing, uh, yeah. Um, and I think, uh, I agree. It's a great time to, uh, spend some time learning. Uh, for me, what I'm going to be, what I've been doing is looking at my accounts and like, okay, how do we, like, are there any areas where, uh, that could be improved in terms of, uh, being more cost efficient? Uh, the other thing that I'm looking at is uh, improving the A plus or enhanced brand content for mm. some of my listings. Uh, so yeah, and I think the bulk of my time is probably spent answering questions and talking to people. <laughs> so Tricia here um, has added a comment: use the time to keep learning, read business and Amazon books, listen to podcasts, watch relevant YouTube videos create online groups and chat. Good time to do the stuff that you always put on the back burner. Yes, totally agree. Kevin is saying, make sure you get some sunshine on your body and exercise. Most of all, stay positive. That's right. Um, Chris, is this a good time to do product development? You know, China is open, right? So one of the things that people could do is start talking to suppliers and maybe start getting samples or, or just kind of do some research on products that you that you will launch maybe after everything is settled down because, you know, eventually, of course, um, things will settle mm-hmm. down and they'll be back to normal. So should we start thinking of that? Is it, is it a good time to work on product development? Definitely. Definitely. Yes. Do that. This is actually a new product that I'm working on at the moment. So that's a product that? I've actually got in <laughs> development and just received it. So it's a special type of sleep mask. I won't go into what it does or how it works, but um <laughs> So, you know, I'm still full steam ahead with product development and, uh, you know, I'm also looking outside Amazon. I'm looking at maybe doing a Kickstarter project or Indiegogo, but um, what was I going to say? I think in terms of, um, yeah, just to get back to the other stuff that the other guys are talking about, I totally agree with all those points. I'm going to watch the freedom ticket from start to finish. (laughs) Like I'm always halfway inside a a course somewhere and I'll just sort of pick out the pick the eyes out of the bed, you know, the best bits. I think this time I'm just going to go right through from end to end. PPC is a topic that people really need to educate themselves about Amazon PPC and sponsored advertising. Cause that's a, that's a really big sort of topic all on its own. And there's plenty of time to figure out how that works. Um, the last thing I've actually started doing last week um, in terms of working on the business was looking at all the subscriptions that I have for all the bits of crappy mm. software that I use, right? So hello profit um, that I know I'm not making a profit. Well, I'm not very much. So I don't need to be sitting there, but so that's gone from a $97 a month subscription down to $5, you know? So anything at the moment, I'm in a preserve capital at all costs type of um, situation. And I want to make sure that when this is all blows over that I'm actually ready to pounce and um, you know, uh, there's, there's the old expression that Warren Buffett used, which was, um, you know, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. Um, I kind of agree with that up to a point, but I think right now we need to be really, really cautious and, um, and just, just hold fire, just, just put a little pause on everything and really try and see where things are actually going to land. Cause this is the most unprecedented um, situation um, in, in history that well, certainly in a generation. So um, I think a lot of sellers are going to go bust. Uh, it could mean a lot less competition. 
Um, so really just hang on and hopefully there'll be a lot, lot less competition down the track. And the other thing, if you do have some spare capital, I've already started poking around on Empire Flippers because I think there's going to be some distressed inventory there where people have to sell their Amazon businesses to, um, you know, because they can't, they've got um, debts or whatever, you know, to actually meet, meet some of the debts. So there's a potential opportunity there. Um, just so I just got that out of the corner of my eye. So that did not answer your question at all. I've even forgotten what it, what it was. <laughs> no, I think it did. The question was, you know, how do people make the most of the time that they have right now? Oh, okay. You know, events yeah. are canceled. We can't go out. Yes. India's sourcing trip is canceled. <laughs> I know. I know. It just breaks my heart. <laughs> I know. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, but, I think uh, that's yeah, pretty I mean, good. I yeah. that's, mm-hmm. that, that's sort of my two cents on all of that as well. There, there, are, there are all the sort of things that I've been doing and will continue to do until but I'm, I'm not sending anything i'm not ordering anything right now i'm just want to see where things land before pulling the trigger on anything yeah perf- t- totally agree so let's see some of the comments over here and guys if you have any questions now's the time to start posting them over here uh or you can raise your hand if you want to speak so uh let's see so margaret uh, over here margaret enever is saying um No, Carol is saying, Margaret, I really appreciate your more cautious attitude. Too many people are screaming, seize the day. Thank you. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. I think, um, yeah, all of us are, you know, we want to be cautious and wary, but we don't want to be too negative and we don't want to be, you know, all gloom and doom. We also want to look at what are the opportunities that are available and how can we make the most of the time that we have now. For example, you know, India sourcing trip, as I mentioned, has been canceled, but we are doing uh, all of the content virtually now. We're doing weekly webinars and we are, um, you know, going ahead with all of the pre-trip webinars that we had planned so that when we go to India in October, we're going to be even more prepared and we're going to really hit the ground running. Um, Let me see if there are any more comments here. So if anyone has any questions, um you can raise your hand or post them here maybe can i just say look i think if you up and look at china i mean i was speaking to a couple of um my friends who uh, have family in china uh yesterday and today and they're saying at the moment china's back to 75 to 80 percent of just normal life normal um you know working so I think, you know, I know it's different because we probably didn't get onto it as quickly here and in the US, but um, hopefully that we can, by doing the right thing for the next, you know, two or three weeks, maybe a month, get over this and be like China. I mean, it's only really, oh, what, 10 weeks since China really first announced its first case and their basic set. I think the only thing, um, Frankie said to me, that the children aren't back at school yet. But other than that, everyone else is like business as usual um, because the nurses and the doctors all stayed in the hospitals or wherever they were, they weren't allowed home. But they've all moved out. A lot of the um, emergency facilities that the hospitals they'd set up are being deconstructed at the moment. So he said there's always going to be a few cases because it it will never get, you know, go away now until we get an immunisation. But the the major part of the, you know, drama is over over there in Mm. some respect. Um, So I think, you know, we've also got to be positive. But, you know, I know we're very nervous and we don't know where it's going to end. But let's hope that we can, um, if we all, if every, you know, especially America, Australia, you know, Europe do the right things, that we can get on top of this quickly um, even though we don't agree with a lot of our governments and all of the things that are happening. Um, but I think the only way to stop this is if we all do what we need to do, stay safe, stay away from everyone, and the quicker that happens, we can all get back to normal and, and move on. But, you know, it's happened in China, and look at the population they've got. So um, exactly. you would think that, you know, like a country like Australia, I mean, we're a blip on China. Um, surely we can do something and contain it here. Um, you know, Singapore's much the same. I mean, you, you don't have the population. So if they can do it, surely we can do it. It must be. Um, obviously, they're a lot more disciplined than we are. I think if their government tells them to, to do something, they tend to abide by it a lot more. Yeah. And I think we're in the right industry. I mean, definitely e-commerce is going to come out stronger. And as Jason alluded to before, you know, there are a lot more people now who are, uh, who maybe were not online shoppers previously. They have experienced online shopping now. They're 
you know, forced to do it. And of course, they will get hooked. They'll maybe get Prime subscription. And, you know, Amazon, of course, is the best company. Um, it, they are in the best position to, you know, cater to all of that demand. And so I think, um, you know, for all of us, um, we are definitely in the right industry and e-commerce is definitely going to keep increasing. I mean, currently it's about, uh, I think, 12% of overall retail sales. So there's definitely a lot of uh, potential for e-commerce to grow. Okay, so Rowan Hodge uh, comments, China suppliers are now offering test MOQs. That is 50 units for new products. I just had one agree to 50 units at a very reasonable price. Last three months, no one would talk to me with reasonable pricing or conditions, hoping things settle by the time I get satisfactory sample completed. So that's a great um, suggestion right here because you know Chinese companies, they're of course back online. They haven't had business for two months and they want your order. So now is a good time to go in and uh, you know, do some negotiation for uh, with Chinese suppliers. Okay, will uh, Amazon really allow us to ship in items after fifth of April? So I think uh, it's anybody's guess. Uh, as of now, it's fifth of April, but uh, I think they'll be looking at the uh, you know the situation very closely, and uh, it might be extended. I mean, what, what do you guys think, Chris? What do you think? Sorry, it just took me a second to unmute and find the yeah. unmute button. Um, <laughs> look, certainly in the US, the US is sort of tracking along very similarly to um, to Italy in terms of the growth of cases. Yeah. Uh, but they're just about they're about a week and a half to two weeks behind. Um, so yeah, it could um, things could get a lot worse there, I think, before it gets better. So I would suspect that Amazon at this stage has sort of maybe done a finger in the air on the 5th of April. I, I can easily see it being extended. And I can also potentially see Amazon, um, you know, at the moment we've got these grandfathered shipping plans. If we created a shipping plan before the 17th of March, it would still be honoured that our goods would arrive. I'm slightly troubled that, that, that they may renege on that commitment. and. Um, start turning away items, you know, as they arrive. Um, so there's just, again, it's so uncertain. You just gotta be so careful right now. Yeah, totally agree. Well, mm. Rowan here says, sorry, my neighbor just rang. I have a snake in the driveway. Oops, I hope <laughs> <it's okay." laughs> uh, In reply to Darren Beecham's keywords, know your keywords inside out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, here's a question for Jason. Should I try to sell on Amazon Singapore as they are not restricted any FBA? Should I try to sell? Yeah. So Jason, uh, what is your experience been with Amazon Singapore so far? Sure. Uh, well, I listed a couple of SKUs there uh, recently and uh, I just made my first sale two days ago. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Was it an uh, essential item or what kind of product soap. is oh soap, okay. Uh, that's my flagship product for the yeah. last six years anyway. Uh so um I um my thoughts on Amazon Singapore are number one that it is um in its like really fledgling kind of stage. Um it is probably one of the smaller, if not smallest online marketplace in Singapore at the moment. Um, and uh, the sales would not be sort of off the charts. I'm going to expect anything like that for now. Um, having said that, I'm reading between the lines here. Uh, I, I know that Amazon's um, view towards Singapore is that it must not fail. Uh, that's from Amazon management. Um, and so when I read between the lines, I think think what they're doing is using Singapore as the launch pad or beachhead into Southeast Asia. So Southeast Asia has 600 million kind of population and that's huge. Uh, some of the countries there like Indonesia also the f amongst like Indonesia is the second fastest growing e-commerce marketplace in the world. It's a annual compounded growth rate of like I don't know 10-20% depending on what survey you read. Uh, so, um, yeah, if you get in early on Amazon Singapore, start to like get some seller feedback, build up your reviews, uh, get some track record of you know, uh, making sales, 
uh, get in the algorithm. I think in maybe two or three years' time, uh, it could potentially be pretty big. Right. So yeah, if you, you're sort of uh, sitting at home <laughs> over the next couple of months, uh, it might be something to explore. Uh, they are waiving all seller fees. Uh, that's the monthly subscription fee as well as some other fees. I don't know. Uh, till end of the year. So right. no harm opening a uh, selling account there at the moment. Yeah, and this is not only for sellers in Singapore, even you guys in Australia, that's something that you could consider, um, you know, for sure. Is there anyone else selling on Singapore uh, right now? Can you press the raise hand button and, you know, if you want to share your, your thoughts? Uh, Megla, I've got a client that's selling in yeah. Singapore. They're doing okay. Yeah. Okay. Getting a few sales every day. Um, what kind of product just, category is it? Just curious. Uh, they're in a, in a, uh, what is it like a shoot protector spray um, and, and fabric protection spray, that sort of um, niche, I suppose. Um, just on the shipping plan side of things as well, I think for marketplaces that are not restricted at the moment in terms of being able to create a shipping plan, um, certainly rank categories, you know, if you're doing some volume in, well, Singapore, <laughs> Australia, other marketplaces that have FBA, which, uh, which are unaffected by the, the, um, the restrictions, it might actually be a good idea to just create some, some shipping plans now, mm -hmm. lots of different sort of quantities and sizes of, of some of your more popular products. So that if, if, you know, worst case again, but just thinking ahead, you know, if, if uh, FBA does shut down or gets restricted, you've still have got, you've got some grandfathered um, shipping plans there that you can kind of pick up and, and potentially still be able to ship your products in. Right. Okay. We've got a question from Andrea over here in regard to PPC, should we reduce our budget and bids or keep budget the same? Chris, do you want to take this one? This is the tough question. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so hard. I mean, the the big thing is if you if you're seeing ACOS, yeah, it depends. If you're seeing ACOS um, going through the roof and conversion rates uh, drop plummeting, um, then yeah, you're probably going to need to adjust your, your strategy. I think it again, it just depends on what you're selling and what category. And if you're selling hand sanitizer and you're lucky enough to be able to do that, just put your prices <laughs> bid like crazy. Um, but uh, you know, but if things aren't really working out, then yeah, maybe just pull your horns in a little bit and try and you know spend little as less as possible. Like I keep going back, preserve capital, <laughs> just cut exactly. costs wherever you can. Yeah, Jason, yeah, what know. what is your approach? Mm. Oh, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> PPC. So in the current oh, okay. scenario, you know, are, are yeah. is it advisable to reduce PPC budgets? Uh, well, I just increased some of my PPC budget today, uh, <laughs> but again, at speak cause some of the stuff I sell is to do with like washing your hands right. and <laughs> taking a shower. <laughs> um, so it really depends on what you're selling. Like uh, for my um, goods that are more to do with uh, packaging, like for parties and that kind of thing, I have uh, this morning, I just created um, discounted coupons for them. That's not like promo codes. That's just, you know, the green tag with like $2 off or 10% off or whatever. So I just um, create a coupon across all my uh, non-skincare products. Um, yep, just to, yeah, hopefully uh, keep the sales going. Uh, the other thing about Singapore, I just want to add this. If you can see my phone, well, it's sort of reflective. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Not oh, very clearly. That's, Oops. <laughs> that's a, what's oh, just happened? That's a picture that, uh, I took while in Singapore in December, January. Uh, so like every day when I walked out to like the recycle bin uh, in the neighborhood, uh, I would notice like on most days there would be an Amazon, uh, there would be one, a few Amazon like bags. So I know my neighbors are buying from Amazon <laughs> in Singapore. Uh. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but one piece of advice, if you're going to sell stuff uh, on Amazon in Singapore, uh, strongly do not recommend to buy, uh, sell stuff that is like the cheap kind of stuff that you make in China because um, there's something in Singapore called Lazada and it's owned by Alibaba mm -hmm. and they have a direct tie up with Taobao in China, which is like the Amazon of China. Um, so all the products get shipped to Singapore at like really, really cheap prices direct from the sellers in China. 
through Lazada. So anybody who wants to buy like a cheap commodity kind of product would just go to Lazada uh, and buy because Lazada charges sellers like what a 1% fee or 0% fees at the moment. Uh, so if you want to sell on Amazon in Singapore, my advice would be go for more premium products. Like for example, if you are based in Australia, I think there are a lot of things in Australia that uh, would be in demand in Singapore. Like the other, uh, over the weekend, as, uh, I drove down to the Margaret River region. I went to like a, a bee production facility where they have beehives and have the bee honey and bee need, bee wine. Uh, 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 manuka, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so that kind of product would, uh, to me, that kind of product, the premium kind of product, product is what you want to be selling if you're looking at Amazon Singapore, not the made in China kind of products. Right. And that's very interesting that you said that because uh, I was uh, reading yesterday that I think Amazon India has also launched an Australian store. So that's another opportunity that you guys need to be aware of if you're in Australia. There is a lot of demand for, you know, these premium Australian made or US made products in countries like, um, you know, Singapore and India as well. So we can talk about this later. I'm planning to address this, uh, you know, in one of the webinars of, uh, for India sourcing trip, but there may be an opportunity for you guys to sell on Amazon India uh, if you do have some sort of an Australian made product. Okay, let me see if we have any more questions. There are quite a few questions. There, there are lots of comments over here. Um, so Margaret is saying the interesting thing, uh, I think, is once the world is over the current crisis, how will this impact China? I suspect a lot of countries will move to be more self-sufficient in more items. We are now realizing the risks of making one country the factory of the world. Yeah, I think that's something that people have really, really realized that um, you cannot depend on one country. I mean, of course, China is and will continue to be the manufacturing hub for most product categories. There is no China. Uh, there's, there is no other country that can currently replace China. But I think increasingly, Amazon sellers and even regular importers need to diversify their sourcing. And uh, what I saw in the last couple of months was that uh, a lot of the garment manufacturers, you know, the big retailers and the brands, they usually have diversified sourcing. They source from multiple countries like India, China, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka. And so a lot of these companies were able to increase their orders from you know, different countries like Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, for example. So this is something that I think e-commerce sellers need to do as well. You need to diversify your sourcing and have different, uh, um, you know, not, not put all your eggs in one basket. Um, Wasn't it interesting um, just how we were all sort of looking for countries outside of China to source from only a month ago? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and now we're all just stampeding back to China. It's so funny. It's like, yeah. Sorry, but sorry think, we forgot. Yeah, we but I think it. in the long term, this has to be a strategy. I mean, of course, you know, China is okay now and the rest of the world and other countries are starting to get this virus, but I think it's not only about this. It was the trade war previously, mm -hmm. and then it was the virus. I think it's, you know, if you look at it uh, from a long-term perspective, yeah. it could be something else, yeah. um, you know, tomorrow. So, yeah. Can I jump in? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Uh, on this point. So I, I all, I've always like uh, tried to have uh, multiple streams for everything. Uh, or multiple bridges, I always say, I don't want to have just, I, I used to be a combat engineer in the military. So if we blow up a bridge, nobody's crossing, crossing the river. Uh, so never have just one bridge. Uh, and so that applies to sourcing. That also applies to selling. Uh, and that applies to like everything. So like, uh, you, like uh, I have US prep companies. Uh, at some points I've used like three concurrently. I have products that are selling on Amazon right now that are made in, or not just on Amazon. So I sell actually on Amazon. I also sell on my own website. I also sell uh, on several other marketplaces. So like eBay in the US is synced to my Amazon account. Uh, and then in Singapore, I sell, I'm listed on Amazon Singapore. I'm also on Q10, which is like a eBay Korea Singapore. Um, I'm also on Lazada, which is very big in Southeast Asia. Uh, I'm also on something called Shopee, uh, which is pretty big as well. They are a public listed company in the US. Uh, um, and uh, I'm on several other channels as well. So 
and then I source from products uh, that are made in China. I have products made in Australia. I have products made in, did I say China? So US, <laughs> Australia, China, Taiwan. I've sourced from India before. I uh, manage a client's account where all the stuff uh, is coffee that's grown and roasted in Kenya. Um, where else? Yeah, I think that's about it. So <laughs> just being widely diversified in terms of where you sell and where you source. Um, yep. Yeah. Kevin uh, is encouraging Darren to do a virtual course for us um, on keywords. <laughs> Darren, where are you? Are you here? <laughs> Okay, um, Cindy, Cindy Cheng has a question for Jason. It's pretty long. Cindy, do you want to unmute yourself and uh, maybe just uh, tell us what your question is? Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, can you hear hello. me? Yes. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I think I actually have a few questions. I think initially is uh, I'm actually uh, currently in the progress of uh, let me see. Actually, I have one, currently one PL in progress and it's uh, almost going into manufacturing. Uh, manufacturing, but uh, I'm just wondering whether I should hold it first or proceed with it. So, you, have you placed an order already? Uh, we, we have been contacting with the company. Uh, but we haven't paid anything yet. But they are at, uh, actually helping us to because okay, uh, this PR product is a uh, candle. Okay. So uh, we are actually like going back and forth, like uh, adjusting the design and all that, and uh, almost going to finish uh, like all these things. And just wondering whether with this current situation, whether we should proceed it or just hold it first until uh, after 5th of April? Yeah, I don't think you'll be able to create a, a shipping plan if it's candles, because I don't think that's an essential. It might be product. essential. Like the it lights might, go out. So? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe you can try to create a shipping plan, you know, see if you can create a shipping plan. Yeah, that's what I would do. Okay, but uh, just that uh, I have one question because uh, I know that for because actually it's a it's a new brand, so uh, do I have to like you know because uh, show Amazon the product with the brand name the image before I can create a listing and then create a shipping oh. plan? Oh, you haven't created a listing. No. Wow. Because okay. My it's a new okay. brand. Uh, my advice is always, uh, if you're talking about selling on Amazon, uh, my advice is always create a listing first before you even order a sample, or that's what I always do. Because I've been burnt doing it the other way around before. Okay. Like I've ordered so, like uh, a lot of samples and then like, whoa, you can't list that on Amazon. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but and candles I mean, might be hazmat. Uh, okay. I think you mentioned candles because candles are flammable. Mm -hmm. uh, because in the niche that I deal with like skincare, then we have essential oils and all that. So certain products and candles are also, uh, well, if you do uh, natural soap, then candles are sort of natural offshoot. <laughs> uh, those items might be considered hazmat, which is uh, short for hazardous materials. So they might not be allowed into FBA uh, unless you get specific permission. And shipping okay. them might also be an issue uh, because you would need to have, might need to have uh, certain certifications as well as the uh, make use of hazmat uh, uh, shipping facilities. Okay, I see. Because it's flammable. So it depends on where you're making it. If it's made in the USA, then it's not so much of an issue in terms of shipping because it's just ground shipping. But if you're shipping okay. it from overseas, then that's going to be an issue. Yeah, potentially. Uh, okay, I'm actually shipping from U US. The product oh, okay. is going to make in US. Right. Yeah. If it's made in the US, uh, my advice would be, number one, go create the listings first. Then try to okay. create... Uh, if it fits, uh, try to get it into one of those categories that is in the priority list. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as it makes sense, okay? Don't, don't try to manipulate the system. Okay. Uh, and then once you're able to create a listing, then you can create a shipping plan. And then once you're in the shipping plan, you'll be able to see if they flag it as uh, you cannot ship uh, 
And then at the same time, I would negotiate the supplier, like, can you do a test order of a small quantity? Oh, okay. Yeah, my first private label, I always tell people made in the USA was a grand total of $80, <laughs> including custom <Okay>. lading. <laughs> okay, can. Okay, I think, uh, yeah, I think that's all for me. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and sorry, another question. Is it okay that we continue to like buy items and send to the press center like for the moment or it's better for us to hold it? I would carry on. If you are doing small quantities and just sending in, I don't see as an issue. Uh, okay. I have approximately a two-ton shipment uh, that's supposed to reach Amazon and I can't wait for it to get onto... <laughs> Uh, onto the ship from China because like well I've been out of stock for like a month mm. uh, yeah so yep yeah I think if you can create a shipping plan then um, you know definitely okay um, thanks yeah um, one, yeah, one thing about thanks. the Amazon situation if yeah just for everyone um, so like tomorrow I'm jumping on a call with uh, Amazon management together with some guys from Australia and New Zealand uh, from Cell Global uh, just to look at, talk about some things. And at the same time, uh, senior management at Amazon head office, this is the US, I'm talking about senior vice president in the US, uh, has been reaching out and I can't say too much because it's confidential at the moment. Uh, we might know more by tomorrow. But uh, Amazon is active, although it's like this giant behemoth that uh, can do anything they want. Uh, they are trying to listen to sellers. And one of the things that has been brought up to the SVP is the issue of in these hard times, uh, would Amazon consider lowering some of their fees? Um, beyond saying that that has been brought up and received well, uh, I cannot say anything more, but we might know more by next week. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, if that happens, yep. that would definitely help this a lot Amazon. of people. Yep. Huh? Yeah, that's awesome. Um, okay, so let's see. Sridhar is saying Alibaba March Expo, March 2nd to 31st. Dates, anyone have any response or experience? No, I'm not really sure what's going on with Alibaba March Expo. Has anyone tried that? Um, Alibaba Expo? Never heard Alibaba. of it. I guess it's an online expo, Sridhar. Is it online? What, what exactly is it? Yes, it's online. So, so they have on the website, they're saying that uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big thing. And I think they're trying to match make those sellers those manufacturers who have some stock readily available. So I think they're, they're trying to drum up some demand for, for this. So I think the pull pitch was whatever is available, ready to go uh, and things like that. So that's why I thought maybe someone has experience. I mean, it looks pretty big on the website, but I haven't heard any, any comments. So that's why my question. Okay. Yeah. I think it's probably just, you know, an, an initiative on their end to, uh, generate some interest uh -huh. and uh, maybe generate some inquiries for their suppliers. Global Sources is doing something similar. So I was on a call with them this morning. They actually have something um, that's called supplier matching, where if you have a specific need, they will do some uh, manual matching for you. Um, okay, someone is asking, Kasi Muhammad is asking, is someone selling on India on this call? Is there anybody selling on Amazon India? Raise your hand or unmute yourself. No? Nobody. Okay. Um, Vince, can we just send the goods to Amazon.sg Fulfillment Center ourselves, or is there a discounted courier service like the US by using Amazon third-party courier service? Jason, do you want to take that? Jason, you're muted. Uh, I'm currently FBM in Singapore, but that uh, I think I answered that there isn't a uh, deeply discounted inbound shipping service that I'm aware of. Uh, the last time I asked Amazon Singapore management, they said there wasn't one either. Okay, so you just have to ship it in yourself, however. Okay, 
Um, also, Kasim is asking, any comments on the change in buying behavior of the customer if we hit, if we hit recession due to this pandemic? I think we addressed this a little bit earlier, but uh, do you guys have any, have any more comments? Um, Margaret? Oh, look, I think it's just so hard to know at the moment because it depends on people's economy, whether they're out of work. I, I just think we can't really make any assumptions very much about what the customers are doing, except that we know um, that everyone is clamouring for, like, sanitizers and all those things, which I think... That's a one-off thing. I mean, well, actually, I'd hate to be selling those in the next 12 months because according to our supermarkets here, the people have bought 18 months worth of toilet rolls. So um, I think, you know, like in six months' time, you might find all those products are just not selling because people have gone crazy and got, you know, far too much supply of a lot of even canned, you know, tomatoes or whatever. So I think it's very hard to gauge what the new pattern's going to be except that maybe but the funny thing is here though you can't do your groceries online in australia our major supermarkets have stopped online shopping you have to physically go to the store oh is it which probably a lot of people aren't aware of yeah um because they can't keep up with the demand um to, yeah, having people to you know like pick and pack and have the stock you know obviously half the things people want or three quarters of their order wouldn't be available anyway so they've actually suspended all online shopping with the supermarkets which is going to be interesting because people have got out of that pattern so a lot of people who religiously had a weekly order aren't doing that or can't do that anymore so um that's another twist on it in australia so yeah i, I just you know i think it's just it's too difficult at the moment to make any patterns because of we just don't know what people are going to have cash flow wise down the track as well. I think that's going to be our biggest problem once Amazon gets up again is that people are still unemployed or catching up with their, their debt. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Karsim, yeah. Thanks for that. Um, the reason why I'm asking is we are looking for select, looking into new category of products. So uh, we we are thinking whether we should put a new criteria as necessity than luxury at this time, point of time. Do we look into product which is more of as a necessity than kind of a luxury or that kind of item? So that's where my question is on like still struggling to find how the things would change with the current scenario. Yeah, I think actually you might have missed out. We did cover this earlier. I think if you go back and listen to the recording, we have sort of talked about this quite a bit. Um, because, okay. So, yeah, it's not a good time to, well, you know, to jump categories just willy-nilly at the moment to get in um, on, you know, cash in, I suppose, because you've probably missed the boat with a lot of it, depending what it is. And if you don't know what you're doing and a lot of the things that are um, popular are gated or maybe, you know, FDA, all different approvals. So it's not something that if you're not up to speed with, you can just go and, um, you know, put some stock in um, straight away. I think it's it's a little bit harder than that, especially for the new sellers. Um, you know, the old people that have been selling for 15 years and know Amazon backwards and have probably got all those things ungated are in the box seat. But I think um, for new sellers, you'd have to be very careful what you choose because the stats are not right, what you're looking at today doesn't reflect what the real true sales are. But I think if you go back and listen, we did sort of go well over that as well before. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. All right. So Nathaniel has a question. Hi, everyone. Jason knows my product. I reached out to Registrar Corp and they want to overhaul my label to meet FDA guidelines. Is it worth waiting for the label overhaul? then list on Amazon US or should I list on Amazon.sg first? So Jason, what is your advice? I answered that in the chat further down. I said, uh, Nathaniel, you can do both concurrently. Okay. Yeah, it depends on whether uh, cash flow or capital is limited or not. Like if, uh, your, if you have enough capital, then go ahead with the FDA uh, compliance. And at the same time, there's nothing stopping you listing on Amazon Singapore at the same time. Okay. So Jeremy is saying, not sure if anyone else had experience with the various partner shipping options to Amazon.sg. But there aren't any partner shipping options, right? Mm, not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. Any more questions from anyone? I don't see any more questions over here. Did I miss anything? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't see any more questions. So guys, if you have any questions, you know, you can unmute yourself um, now, or if you just wanna, you know, share something with the group, share your experiences with the group. Is anybody seeing an increase in sales in the last few weeks? Tell us, who's seeing an increase in sales on Amazon US? You can unmute yourself or, or raise your hand. Anybody? Jason, yes, you are. <laughs> I'm slightly down this week because I ran out of stock on some of my best sellers. Okay. Uh, but this year, January, February, and half of March uh, have been the best month so far. I'm probably close. I'm close on a six-figure monthly sales. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And that's for mostly your um, your your soap brand, right? Or is it combined? Mm, half and or? half. Okay. Yeah. I think food items would also be really good to do at this point because, um, you know, that's of course an essential and, and sometimes people are wary about doing food products and, you know, things like supplements and all, but of course they're doing really well. And even, you know, moving forward, I think, you know, if you do consider food items that, that could be kind of an essential um, product. So what do you guys think? Is anybody doing food products over here? I'll Any take experience? this one, Meg. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, I've got I've got a client that does sell food in the US and it's gone bonkers. And they kind of even they sell like junk food, really. Um, and I'm actually partnering with that client on a new uh, venture where we're we're sourcing products and food items out of Hawaii. Mm. And um, so yeah, I'm I'm looking to pivot quite quickly <laughs> into the food and staples, uh, just to the diversification sort of point that we were raising earlier. So yeah, it's a, it's a really, really hot category. It's just a tricky one to get into and get authorized to be able to sell stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, so the, the barrier to entry is high, but that's an opportunity mm. as well. Absolutely. It's an opportunity. There's going to be a lot of opportunities that spring up out of this catastrophe. Exactly. And uh, you, you need to be ready to pounce when uh, the dust settles. <clears throat> With food, a few things that if you knew that you need to be aware of is that it can be heat dependent. So there's certain months of the year, and I can't remember, it's like May, June, July. Um, if your product is meltable and things like that, it has to be taken out of the warehouse. Uh, so there's a few things and expiry dates. You've got to make sure that you've got enough expiry date on them if they have an expiry date. And something that I've heard from a few people who sell food is that they have an awful lot of problem with rats eating their products in the warehouse. Have you come across that one, Chris? Uh, no, not yet. Oh. I, <laughs> I don't have any food in Amazon warehouses right now, but, but I've never heard of that. That's amazing. Well, I hadn't heard it and somebody, I was on a, a podcast or a, a message with somebody and um, they were saying how much stock they lose because the rats eat about a third of their stock um, in Amazon. And I went, oh, well, yuck. And I just started to feel sick and thought, I can't do food because I'm paranoid about a rat. Um, so uh, it's just sort of some other things that you need to take into consideration because I think, um, and meltables is not just a chocolate bar. It can be, um, you know, anything that gets like, um, I think there was somebody posted today, peanut butter can melt, things that they, they call those liquids. Um, so you've just got to be careful when you list that you're going to have to pull them all out. For, you know, so you don't want to be stuck with putting all that stock in now and then May, June, July, August, you're going to, where are you going to move it to? What are you going to do with it? Um, well, so, yeah, I think yeah, they're that's, just, for new sorry. people, um, you know, Chris is obviously a lot, you know, more advanced and will know this, but a lot of people here listening mightn't understand there are a lot more things you've got to actually consider as well. Yeah, so there's, don't... there's a lot, lot more moving parts when it comes to selling food on Amazon, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, in our case, though, it's, we're going to be using Seller Fulfill Prime and my partner has a, has a you know, a, 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 what is it, a warehouse in Seattle, which is not a good thing right now. I actually haven't heard from him for a few days. So I'm a bit worried. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, sort of. No, I'm actually kind of kind of worried. Um, and uh, you know, it's and and during summer months as well with like chocolates and other items like that. Um, 
there's there's these new kind of well not that new but they're like ice packs and stuff that you can put into each box that are quite cheap and they can actually keep chocolate um you know un- not melting for up to two and a half days so yeah it's uh mm. it's usually okay anyway yeah there's a lot of moving parts in food don't, don't just go jumping in and certainly don't look to import food from outside of the united states and think that that's going to be okay because it probably is not if you don't have right certification and fda and all the rest of it so yeah it's um yeah be careful right so jeremy has a long question jeremy where are you do you want to unmute yourself and um tell us what your question is i think he was just sharing a point Okay, he's talking about Ninja Van. Um, Okay, let's see. Can I put new keywords on my listings that are related to virus prevention? For example, soap for preventing coronavirus. No, right? (laughs) I'll take that. I'll take, I will take. Yeah, Chris. (laughs) I'll take that. I I accidentally left the words alcohol free on one of my client's listings. It's not there anymore. Oh, wow. Suspended. So, and I am really, really struggling to get that product back up and running. So yeah, you do not right now, this is like, I don't know if anybody remembers a pesticides issue, perhaps some new sellers won't know what we're talking about, but Amazon's algorithm is sweeping through every single listing on its platform and looking for words like virus and alcohol and, you know, anything to do with outlandish claims about the, the, the capability of a product. So, and, it, and for them, they do it at scale and they do it using a computer and a list of keywords that trigger the suspension of listings. So yeah, it's a really, really hard thing to get a product unsuspended when these sorts of things sweep through. So right now I'd actually be going back the other way and clearing out and checking all my inventory uh, if I was you to make sure that, you know, I'm not using any of those words anywhere. I don't know, Jason, you, you kind of with, it sounds like with a soapy sort of thing that you're in that space a little bit. Have you had any issues yet or? No. Um, no, I haven't. Uh, but I don't make outlandish claims. Like I wouldn't put a, the word virus or corona because, like what Chris said, uh, Amazon works on an algorithm, and uh, their their bot is extremely overzealous at times. Uh, and if they spot the word corona or the word virus in your listing, they'll just shut it down. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, that'll be the end but of that. Words like antibacterial. How did you go with those, Jason? Because I know a lot of people just simple words like you know antibacterial or things like that. They got not. Yeah, I actually it. do have those on my listing. <laughs> oh, you do. Uh, like some of my tea tree products. <laughs> <laughs> but is that okay? Um, well, no. Well, I they've know been sitting there for one. years. Um. So, yeah, they've been okay. Uh, but again, those have been there for years. Mm. Uh, of course, it doesn't mean that they're safe. Amazon sometimes like retroactively just like does does things. <laughs> <laughs> and it's but all definitely- bot driven for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, but definitely for now, it's advisable not to take yeah. a risk. Um, yeah. Meltable May through September. Okay, so these are the food items. Is the rats that work at Amazon that are eating the chops, the chocks? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So I actually advice- do have a friend. <laughs> yeah. She sends. Uh, she does mainly groceries, and every shipment she sends in, like a few items, will get pinched, and she's pretty sure it's taken by the staff at the fulfillment <laughs> centers. Party time. <laughs> Okay, so someone's asking, is it advisable to send products to Amazon SG Warehouse in Singapore using Smart Pack or Speed Post? How do you send your products, Jason? I'm FBM. I have a little warehouse space in, okay. uh, of my own. Yeah, so but how, I, what, how would you advise people to send products to FBA? Uh, they probably have guidance there. And as long, I think as the important thing is to put on the right shipping labels because that's when they receive the stuff, they need to scan the shipping label on the outside of the carton. I'm not sure whether it's a requirement to send things in cartons. It might be, uh, but best to just, I'm pretty sure the, the shipping guidance is somewhere on the amazon.sg uh, seller central thing. Yeah. So Cindy is asking, does Amazon SG have FBA centers? Yes, they do, Cindy. 
Um, they do exact things like Amazon US. Yes, they do. And just one center, so it's not going to get split. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's just one center, of course. Um, yeah, okay. So let's see, Margaret. I wouldn't even look at products that are trending at the moment. This is a point in time event and it is now too late. I would be focused on what buyers may move to after they have plenty of toilet paper and hand sanitizer. Um, <laughs> this will change the way we do things permanently. What products be people what products people be looking for? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, you know, at least in, in the next year or so, I mean, if we do go into a recession, it's gonna change how um people buy products and uh, you know, it's gonna change product research as well. So, uh, okay, Norman has raised his hand. Norman, do you want to unmute yourself and go ahead and speak? Hi, just to share my experience, uh, because I actually did uh, Amazon FBA in Singapore. Okay. So, uh, regarding sending the inventory, I, I think for me personally, because I have a car, so actually I drove down directly to the warehouse uh, to actually put in the inventory. Yeah, and actually it's a pretty amazing experience uh, because uh, you can really see a lot of people shipping stuff and, 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 and driving into Amazon warehouse to really bring things out. And yeah, I think it's quite interesting. Oh wow. So That's in terms really of the process, it's really quite straightforward uh, because they have a lot of documentation that explains step by step on uh, how to do it. Yeah, and it's actually pretty clear. Okay, that's great to know. I didn't know that you could actually drive up to um, the center and just you know drop things off yourself. That's awesome. Um, okay, cool. Does anyone have any uh, anything else to add or any uh, you know comments or any experiences you want to share related to what's going on or you know just say something nice and positive before we sign off? <laughs> This is a quiet bunch. I just thank you all for all, all the, the help in this conversation from you, seller. It's really good to learn and hear what, what's coming up and how to think about what we're doing next. So thank you. You're welcome. Welcome. Where you are you dialing in from, Rowan? Are you in Australia? Yeah, I'm in Sydney. I'm in my office, which is a converted work shed. <laughs> it looks like a sauna. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I promise not to take my clothes off and wear a towel. So uh. <laughs> that's cute. Yeah, no. Look, I think everyone just needs to stay positive. Oh, sorry, Kev. And you know, try and just help each other out and communicate with each other and share and try and battle through this as best we can and all come out on the other side and be able to um, move forward and become better than we were before. Hopefully, absolutely. Kev. Mm. And the other thing, all these good things that you've got planned over the coming weeks, Megla, for bringing, bringing the deli fair to people's houses. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we're still thinking about, uh, you know, uh, doing some things, but uh, I want to do more, more stuff online. So one of the things that we're thinking of doing is getting more suppliers uh, from India and maybe even China, we'll see, to showcase their products in webinars. So let's see how that goes. Um, you know, it'll, it'll sort of be like a virtual webinar or a virtual trade show. We have been doing this in our Facebook group, in the India Sourcing Facebook group. Um, I, I do bring in suppliers, you know, and they're sitting in their sample room with their products behind them and they're actually showing their products. It's, it's a very good experience. Um, and you can ask questions directly to, to the suppliers. So it's, it's a live webinar. So that's something that we're planning to do. Let's see how that goes. Um, yeah. But I think that that will be very useful for, for people. Yeah, it's a good learning curve for people to see how the process works if they're sort of a, a, a new to the game. And if they're experienced, they can see that, you know, the, the, the supply chain, people don't want to upset the supply chain. People want to see the positive, you know, we can, you know, as if we can just turn the, turn the switch back on. You know, if the switch, if it if it's too long and the switch gets lo left too long, it's going to take too long for the for the electricity to get back into the the system. You know what I mean? So um, just everybody keep positive. That's all I can say. 
Yeah, absolutely. And there's so many Facebook groups, you know, um, join our Facebook group, India Sourcing. Chris has one, Australian seller. Margaret has one for Geelong. Join in the Facebook groups and we try not to be negative. Of course, we have to be cautious about what's what's going on and we have to be ready and prepared. But at the same time, I think we want to, you know, support each other, lift up each other and mm. uh, just try to look at the bright side as much as possible. And yeah, um, yeah I think, you know, the virtual trade shows, um, they will work really well with the Indian suppliers because most of the Indian suppliers, they speak good English. And so they're, yep. a, they're able to do, you know, webinars and talk about their companies and answer questions. So I think that that should be a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Manga. Yeah, and we'll also be organizing, you know, more of these meetups, meetups. <laughs> um, we could probably do Love one it. in the evening where we have our wine glasses and all. This is a bit more you know, during the day and we're all formal and with our coffee and tea, but I think we can be a bit more chill and relax <laughs> with a glass of wine. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to buy some cheese from the supermarket so we can have <laughs> cheese with our wine. <laughs> you can't get cheese in Australia, there's no cheese. Oh, really? Yeah, hard. Yeah, very hard. Kev, wow. Kevin, you shouldn't be having cheese anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Not you as well. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Great. So, uh, Margaret, Jason, Chris, any last, uh, you know, parting words of wisdom from you guys? Uh, Chris, go first. Yeah, I do agree that I think um, that we should see an uptick in online shopping after this, I hope. Um, my parting advice would be be careful and hold everything don't rush into anything, um, you know, don't be, just be really careful right now. Just play a wait and see and be patient. That's awesome. it. And and look after each other and don't get precious about stuff. Just, yeah, be nice to each other. Great advice. Jason, how about you? Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. Like, seriously. <laughs> uh, yeah, just don't try to like do a get rich quick expect like a million bucks overnight. Uh, that's how you get scammed. And parting word is the world is not ending. It's not a zombie <laughs> apocalypse. <laughs> exactly. This is just a bump on the road. And, uh, you know, this, uh, this, this shall also pass for sure. Kevin, what about you? Yeah, it, it, it's it's a it's a it's a big bump in the in the road, but it's something we've never ever experienced before. I mean, yeah. we've all had downturns in business, um, or you know, it's quiet in business. Um, but we used to have a, a business in Geelong, and if Geelong didn't win the football that week, business would be slow on the Monday. Wouldn't it, <laughs> yeah, it did. It, it made a difference if, if our beloved cats yeah. won. But I mean, you know, this is like just. You know, they were little tiny things that little tiny and sometimes bump. I think, is this whole world, is this really, really happening? Like how intelligent is the world and how far we are advanced with all the things we can do, but yet this has crippled everything. It's just mm -hmm. sometimes you still can't believe it. Yeah. Another experience I had, we, I started a business and on the Monday morning I opened the business um, that there's a, a financial um, uh, place in Geelong that had a lot of people's money tied up with their super and whatever. And the people were actually making good money by having this financial institute look after their money. But they went boom, bang. And it was like a bank. Uh, what, go on, Mark, jump in. What was the name of that? A building Sorry? society. A building, it's a building society. society. That's right. And um, I, I actually had customers who. Uh, were owed me money and it were mainly old people that had all their savings tied up and they said I they said can I can I take my car because I'd actually finished repairing it and I said take the car and I'll tr trust you and they said really and they became customers for life mm. because I trusted them but it was they couldn't access their money. And that was, we're talking, you know, sometimes a thousand or more dollars in a couple of situations. But, you know, sometimes you've just got to trust in your gut and sort of let things sort of flow um, and do what you feel is right. You know, money is not everything in life either. You know, it's, it's 
how you can sort of help someone if if they're in in need. You know, if if you, I mean, some of us might have a good cash and money. And some of us might have a good store of toilet roll. But you know, <laughs> if a friend in need, you're always going to have a spare toilet roll, surely. Yeah, absolutely. To help someone. So if we all have that in mind, um, I think you know maybe we're all you know we'll all end up in a better place. Who knows? Totally. Well, yeah. Tracy says it's wine o'clock in New Zealand. <laughs> it's always wine o'clock in New Zealand. And, and Mimi, it's wine o'clock for you too. <laughs> Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. And um, yeah, everyone just uh, stay positive and reach out to any of us or, you know, other sellers, if you have any questions or if you have any concerns and uh, let's just stick together, be positive and we'll try to do another meetup maybe in the next couple of weeks and we'll see you there. All right, guys. Thanks. Thank you very much and have a good day. Good evening. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Megla. Thanks, thanks everyone. Guys. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, guys.